Zookeepers, and thank you so much for joining us today as we get to show you another part of Planet Zoo. My name is Bo, and I'm Lead Community Manager here at Frontier, and today I'm joined by some very familiar faces. We've got Community Manager Shante, we've got Senior Artist Lisa, and we've got QA Tester Sam. How is it going? It's going great, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah great. You were both um, with us at Gamescom and at E3, so lots of fun. How was the experience for you? I mean, E3 was honestly mind-blowing. Uh, there was so much going on. We got to show off the game to so many people, not just to the press, but also to you, the community. So that was amazingly good fun. But then Gamescom, was kind of the pinnacle of that where finally we were able to provide a hands-on demo and everyone got to play it and for me that was really really fun. Awesome. And what was it like meeting some of our community in person? Oh everyone was so nice and you know everyone had such a genuine passion and interest in the game it was just so wonderful to be around and I could have spoken to everyone for hours and there was <laughs> some really great ideas for zoos that I cannot wait to see so yeah we're very lucky. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah we really are and speaking of that lovely community today we get to show you the content we were showing behind closed doors at Gamescom. We're going to be a bit further on in the campaign so for the purpose of not spoiling the story we've turned off the narration um, but instead we have the lovely Lisa and Sam showing us around the park so let's take a look. All right, so this particular scenario that we're looking at here is scenario number seven. It is set in an Indian subcontinent in a nice and warm savanna environment, as you can see. Uh, this is a really good kind of quick look at our piece by piece as well, because everything that you can see here has been put together rather meticulously by one of our concept artists, wow. who spent a lot of time working on it. So you'll also be able to create this kind of stuff. Awesome. So here we're also showing off our Indian theme, but we'll probably look more into that later. Now, one of the things that we've also discussed at Gamescom is our franchise mode, mm -hmm. where sandbox meets simulation. <laughs> so this will allow you to be really creative and establish your own kind of brand of zoos as you explore different research options, get more information and really branch out in all your different zoos. Now, as we kind of load into this level, kind of take a good look around, this one comes with a lot of problems with the animal welfare that we're going to be solving because you want your animals to be happy and thriving. Yeah. And we're going to make sure that they are. And now one of the first things that we're going to be taking a look at is the rhinos. Now you may or may not notice some guests will be running around quite speedily. <laughs> Usually that means trouble is afoot. And in this particular instance, this trouble weighs a whopping 2,100 kilograms if it's a male. So here we have our Indian rhinoceros, who's a bit, you know, doing his own thing. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we need a plan of action. So what should we do when an animal escapes? So if an animal were to escape, the person who's going to be corralling them back to their habitat is the veterinarian. Mm -hmm. So to hire a vet, you can go into your staff panel and all the way at the end, you've got the button for the veterinarian. So you'll want to plunk them down on a path and then once they're there, they're going to go to the nearest animal and tranquilize it to be able to bring them back to their habitat safely. For now, you can see you've tranquilized the animal, bringing it back to the habitat, but we've got one more problem here. <laughs> and that's a really big hole in the habitat <laughs> wall. So we're going to complete the barrier and you can just do that by going into the barrier editor, clicking on the post and then you'll automatically drag out the fence so you can just safely close that off. Great. Now you'll want to choose different barrier types for different animals. Uh, in this instance, like I said, whopping 2100 kg doesn't really get stopped by a lot of things, which is why here we've provided an electric fence right. to give him a bit of a, a warning of maybe you don't want to go outside. So that's what we've, we've used here, but there's a lot of different barrier types that you can use as a player. Mm -hmm. And we can use all sorts of heat maps to keep an eye on the animals and our park? Yes, so we've got a variety of heat maps. They're all super useful. Um, we've got some that talk about the temperature. We've got some that talk about um, how happy the animals are, how happy the guests are or your staff. So there's a lot of detail that you can see really easily just yeah. by looking at the heat map and zooming out so you get a good overview of the zoo. Perfect. So we'll be going more in depth about these heat maps later, but for now, let's take a look at one of our other habitats. Yeah, so we've now arrived at the Springbok and the Pronghorn Antelope habitat. So what's going on with them? So these guys um, are not very impressed with their habitat currently. Um, it's got a, got a couple of problems. Mm. Um, but first, I think we should take a really good look at the Pronghorn. It's one of my personal favorite animals in the game. <laughs> 
If we get into Animal Cam and have a good look at the at the little fur, oh. it's so <laughs> sweet. Oh, they are so fluffy. Oh, so <laughs> sweet. So if we exit Animal Cam and we select the animal, we'll see that we've got a panel displaying all of the pronghorn's needs. Uh, their nutrition, welfare, there's a huge list going on here that, that we really need to make sure is as high as we can possibly make it. If we go to the tab at the top, the terrain tab, we'll see there's a lot of red going on here and that's not, that's not what we want, yeah, so that's let's sort this out. Um, we can go into the terrain toggle and select the different types of terrain that uh, the pronghorn would like and adjust it accordingly, so let's, let's make some changes and, and, and sort this out. Yeah, and we can, we can see the sliders change right now, which is, again, I say this, I think, every video that we do, <laughs> but I really, really love those sliders, okay? Yeah. Um, but this is already looking a lot better, and the guests seem to enjoy it as well. Oh, absolutely. But I think it's really important that we need to find the balance, because mm. if we move close to where the pronghorn and springbox shelter is, we'll see that there's actually a barrier here that's one-way glass mm. and we do this so that the animal doesn't become stressed. The springboks and pronghorns are both quite shy animals and if they're surrounded by guests all the time they can really easily become quite stressed and that really impacts their welfare. If you've got stressed animals then their welfare will reduce quite dramatically so it's really important to keep them happy. Oh, so we've moved over to the birds, tapirs habitat now. We've not seen them before, they look amazing. Uh, so now when we check their welfare, it seems like they're not feeling enriched, correct? That's right. I have to just say, these animals are so fascinating. Yeah. And uh, apparently they are classed as living fossils because they haven't changed much in 35 million years. Ooh. So that's exciting. They must be doing something right. Yeah, <laughs> tell us, give us the secret. Um, so the birds tapir, they don't have any uh, items in their habitat to keep them happy. I mean, they can go for a swim in their pool, they've got their shelter, but ultimately they don't have anything to really enrich them like modern zoos do. So if we move to the bottom and we select the habitat tab and we go to enrichment, you'll see we've got a huge selection here. We have toy enrichment, we have food enrichment, and we have climbing. Now, the beds tap it won't climb the items we've got here. They're not climbing animals but they will be enriched by some food items and some toy items. So if we go to the filter and we filter by their species, we can see which items they specifically will lovingly interact with. So here we have a great filtered list and we can start placing down some items. So there's a, there's a huge range here and I think we might as well just place all of them. Let's, <laughs> let's go for it, let's enrich <laughs> these tapirs, they deserve it. So I should actually say that um, the animals will become bored with enrichment items in their habitat over time. So maybe it's worth us holding back one of each so that we can swap it up and, and keep them engaged and interested. So if we now select the tapir, we'll see that the enrichment is a much higher value. We're back in the green, we're at 100% and uh, these, these are feeling very enriched right now, which is perfect. Absolutely. So now if we go to the environment tab, there's some more problems here. The tapirs don't have any trees in their habitat currently, and I mean, that's not ideal really. We want them to have some, some foliage that they enjoy. So if we go to the nature tab and we have a look in there for, uh, for our trees, and we've got another huge range of items here, we can search by the biome and the continent that the tapir is from. So that way we can get foliage that really, really does match where these animals are from. So we can really make sure that they're happy with everything in their habitat. Because that is the ultimate aim, really, to make sure that all the animals are completely uh, cared for and their welfare is as high as it can be. So let's pick a tree. That's perfect, and we'll place that down and make sure that we start adding them into some nice places to make their habitat look nice and green. And we'll see that uh, if we go select the tap here now and select their tab, then we'll see that they're very happy with their trees and their coverage. Brilliant. <laughs> Looks like we've solved another problem. So um, where to next? So 
I think next up we should take a look at the gharial, which is one of my favorite animals in this demo actually. And uh, when we roll up to his habitat, mm -hmm. I know it's a he, because this is where my incessant animal facts come in. Okay, be prepared guys, <laughs> I've got plenty. Uh, when we take a closer look at this gharial, you can see that he's got quite a bulbous swelling on his snout. Right. This indicates that he is indeed a male. Oh. He will use it to make hissing sounds at other males and to attract females. And uh, it's actually also kind of like a mini radar on the water. So it helps him to fish. <laughs> That's amazing. It's really, really cool. So, Chant, if you take a look at this habitat, what do you think is wrong with it? It looks like there's no clean water. Indeed, and we can verify this by quickly hopping into our heat map. So if you toggle on the heat map via the little radar thing, you can see that all the water area here is red. Now red mm. means that this water is not clean. And unclean water can bring with it disease. It means that the drink quality goes down. If the animal likes to drink from the water that's in their habitat, mm -hmm. they won't feel as nice, they can get ill. And if one animal gets ill, that can spread to all the other animals in your habitat. So we're just going to make sure that his water is nice and clean. This will not just be good for him, but it will also be good for your guests because as you can see now, the water looks really murky. If you like to take a little dip under it, right. we get to show off some of our volumetric water. Oh, I love this. It looks really nice, but it would look even better if it was clear, wasn't it? Yes. So we'll just kind of come on up and we're going to be using one of our facilities, which is a water treatment plant. So we're going to just put that down. This functions like a building, so mm -hmm. it comes in on a grid. You can place it down wherever really, as long as it's connected to the path. But you'll want to keep in mind that your guests don't actually like to see the inner workings of your zoo. Right. So you'll want to keep it nicely tucked away or build a bit of a building around it because then it looks really nice and your guests can't be negatively influenced by the noise and all of the kind of appearance of it. So once you put that down uh, and you go out of the building mode, your water will start clearing up. Now for the purposes of these demos, we mm -hmm. have sped that process up. Right. But if you now just take a look at the water, you can essentially see it clearing up right away. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I love that. So that's way better for your gharial. Uh, you can dip into the water again if you want to take a look at that. He'll be a lot happier, he'll stay healthy. And you know, it's really important for him to be able to take a nice swim in some clean water, which you've provided for him now. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. So let's move on. In our E3 gameplay demo, we showed off the amazing climbing behavior. And here we have the mandrills. Um, they're clearly meant to climb, so can we give them something exciting? Of course we can. So, of course, mandrills are monkeys. They're the largest monkey species on the planet, mm -hmm. so they enjoy climbing. Now, we have piece by piece climbing, so you can literally build your own climbing frame exactly how you want it. And if the mandrills can reach it, they'll be climbing it, and that's amazing. But I know that some of our uh, community members really like to get into the nitty gritty of the management <laughs> and the simulation. So if yes. you don't want to spend a lot of time kind of building your climbing frame, we also provide you with blueprints, which you can easily put down. So if you want to select a blueprint, you can see it comes in with a bunch of different parts already assembled. Perfect. We've added a bunch of different um, constructed versions where you've got some low ones, some mm -hmm. high ones, some that function more like runs. So you can use these pieces to build your own large climbing frame if you wanted to, speeding up the process a bit. Awesome. But of course, if you want to go build piece by piece, then you can do that that's well. super fun <laughs> as well. <laughs> that's great. And then of course you'll be wanting to provide them with shelter. Actually, these ones have a really nice little temple area which mm. we can go into. And they have a little bedding and a bit of enrichment items as well in there. They have some toys they can play with. So that's gonna make sure that they stay nice and happy and fully enriched. Great. And, and we've now been showing off loads of animals and their habitats. So before we move on to, to the final one, um, let's take a quick look at this beautiful Indian subcontinent theme. It's so gorgeous. And again, this entire zoo is piece by piece. It is. So this entire temple structure has been built by us piece by piece. It's honestly quite amazing. This was one of my favorite themes working on this game. So I'm so happy that we finally get to show it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of sandstone here. We've got the very temple looking set part of it, but mm -hmm. we've also got a more of an Indian street vibes where you've got the flexi color plaster. Yeah. You'll be able to build some really nice looking village houses. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of sculptures in this set as well. Wow. Lots of fabric pieces. There's really loads of things for everyone to get their hands on and really start decorating this zoo with. So I guess for our final habitat building challenge, we're gonna look at something very exciting. Sam, can you tell us a bit about what we're doing here? 
So we've had the largest monkey. Let's move on to a very large big cat. <laughs> uh, we've got a partially finished habitat here. It's uh, got a big hole in it, so we probably mm. don't want to be adding any animals to this right now. So let's first up start by building in some barriers to fill this hole. So I think we've currently got concrete. Uh, we can select that from the barriers toggle at the bottom and complete that. Um, so that's looking much nicer now. Yeah. So while the tiger's on route, let's let's get the habitat set up. So first things first, I think it's worth us selecting the barrier and adding a little glass window. Yes. That way we can make sure that our guests can see the tiger because, I mean, you know, if someone told me there was a tiger in a zoo, I went and there's literally concrete everywhere. I'd be like, I want to see it. <laughs> um, so we'll save guests from bringing their stepladders with them and, uh, and we'll, we'll make sure they can see them. So, Next thing, we need to place a food tray and a water bowl mm -hmm. so that the keeper can feed and make sure that the animal's got some something to drink. So normally we'd need to add some shelter to the habitat, but this habitat already has some shelter built into it, which is perfect. So the tiger has somewhere to go when it rains or snows. So we've done food, we've done drink, it's got shelter. Next thing is to add some enrichment items. Yes. So. Let's do as before, we'll filter by species and we can see here that we've got a number of different enrichment items for the tiger. So we can add a blood pumpkin, which Ooh. is a really cool food enrichment item that is uh, used by big cats and the garyl, who had one in the habitat earlier. And this is basically frozen blood in like a pumpkin case that uh, a lot of modern zoos will provide to big cats so that they can peel away the pumpkin and and lick away the uh, the blood sickle in the middle, which yeah. sounds very interesting. <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah. So now we can also place a couple of items like the scratching post, which is uh, obviously a, a big favourite of any cat of any size. Mm -hmm. um, so as before, we've got enrichment, we've got food, we've got drink, shelter. Now we need to add some trees. So once again, we can select our tiger and filter by continent and biome. And we can make sure that the trees that we're adding to the habitat are perfect for the animal and matches exactly where the animal would come from. So now we have a wonderful tiger habitat and a very happy tiger, which is what you want. Great. Well, I think I speak on behalf of all of us when I say we've learned so much today, I feel way more prepared to tackle challenges in my future zoos. Yeah, and there's so many more challenges to come and different ways that you can play the game. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how everyone deals with the situations in their own way and, and what they'll be building in their own zoos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you fancy tackling something you know, by yourself, we've got career mode and some really, really great narratives to, to go through there. We've got franchise mode, as Lisa mentioned earlier, which is another really great way to play. You can trade with other players, you can get daily goals, weekly goals, there's there's so much for really everyone and whatever way you want to play really. And when you get your hands on the beta, you will be able to create your own stunning zoo in the savannah biome with all the India subcontinent building pieces you see right here. And speaking of that beta, not long to go now, it will run from the 24th of September to the 8th of October and you will get all of the content that you've seen today and in our previous gameplay demos. So lots to get stuck into and get creative with. To join the beta, make sure to pre-order the Planet Zoo Deluxe Edition using the links in this video's description. We'll have so much more news about competitions and activities we'll be running during this beta, so keep an eye on our forums and social channels all via at Planet Zoo Game. Thank you again for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.